I'm hungry. I should never read these things when I'm hungry, but it seems like I'm always hungry. Cake! Well, hello, friends, <laughs> and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies, it's just a fact, and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up. Today, we are jumping right back into r slash tales of neckbeards or neckbeard stories, whatever. Actually, it comes from my personal subreddit, r slash Red X reads. We are continuing the Toilet Beard Saga with part number four today. Ramtide also has a new part to his saga up, but I just gotta hold off a little bit. We got some other stuff that needs wrapping up, but I'm gonna get to it eventually. You know what I mean? We all gotta like stand in line or something, but I can promise 100% that if you provide your patients, I will provide you with that good old Red X treatment. That good old neck beard narration. Or whatever else, since we are branching out into some new subreddits. Regardless, <laughs> let's get some plugs and disclaimers out of the way, as we do, and then we will dive right into some toilet beard cringe. <laughs> toilet beard 4, Age of Stink. <laughs> it's a good title. I bring you a mixed bag of goodies today. I started writing this at work, and I plan to give some more recent things pretty soon. I would not count on daily updates just because I'm busy as hell right now, setting up to get married. AOP, congratulations. Pick the right one. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Double, triple check. No need for a setup this time if you've read all the previous parts. We got part one, two, three, and also... Him. Him. Oh, just what we need in the morning. Some neck beard butt crack. Look at that. He's got his uh, headphones and controller readily accessible. And what looks like a jar of piss. Or water. <laughs> I am hesitant to call it piss because it does have a clearish color. But it also might not be water since I've never known a neck beard to drink water regularly. There's plenty of other cans around. What is this, like, rock stars and Mountain Dews and Dr. Peppers and stuff? Oh, Toilet Beard, creating his own little nest on the couch. Is he really 300 pounds, though? I guess you can't see the gut hanging off the front. But you definitely see that he's a thick boy, and he's got a skinny little arm there. Skinny fat, that's what he is. But that's enough neckbeard butt crack for one lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that. And we start the story with closeness. During the times between D&D, &D, if Toilet isn't passed out on his disgusting couch, taking 30-minute dumps, or crying alone in his room, <laughs> he's practically glued to Ben. You can take the dumps while you cry, save some time. <laughs> Ben's watching TV, Toilet Beard is there. Ben's in the kitchen, Toilet Beard is orbiting. Ben goes to the store, Toilet has come along too. Ben's having sex with his wife, well, that's really the only time that she's able to get Ben alone. <laughs> and apparently has used this tactic many times in order to separate them. St. Ben just spends the most time with Toilet Beard. And to his credit, he has tried a lot to help this reject fit in with the group and uh, society at large. <laughs> Unfortunately, we think that prolonged beard experience has worsened Ben's mental state and only exasperated his depression. It happens. Fitting even more into the old man jokes that we make about him and his creaky knees, now Ben often sports a thousand yard stare. <laughs> and just checks out of conversations regularly. I've seen some shit, man. <laughs> Rare are the days when the light behind his eyes shines through, and rarer still when he sports the energy that a 25-year-old should normally have. This beard has been sucking him dry. And not in the fun way. <laughs> I was a little bit worried about which way that was going. Ben's armchair sits facing the TV, with a chair for his wife to sit in next to it. Toilet Beard has claimed the first of our small couches to seat his fat frame for the rest of the time. It used to sit in front of the TV... But now, it has unfortunately moved against the window and faces the rest of the house. So that now, he can see who comes and who goes. As well as whether or not the upstairs crew is active. 
My room is a safe haven. I like to believe that I exude enough fuck you energy to thankfully keep Toilet Beard from trying to come and talk to me in my space, especially after my last birthday, which is a story that's coming up. I feel like it's very obvious how disinterested I am in Toilet Beard, and I often decline his invitations. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Dude ain't gonna get the message any other way. Stonewall him. <laughs> hey, Miles, I'm working on a new D&D &D campaign. It's about stolen plotline to Bioshock, Assassin's Creed, or Fallout, etc. Oh, great. Sounds like a blast. <laughs> you wanna join in? No, <laughs> but have fun. Oh, okay. Well, the offer's open any time. Thanks, but I have way too much shit to do. Y'all have fun, though. And I zip back to my room where it is safe. God, I identify so much, OP. <laughs> this interaction repeats about two or three times every month. Can I tell you that it never changes? His creativity is always lacking. And thankfully, Lee has shamed him multiple times for lifting directly from other, better properties. I actually quit playing D&D because, one, it took up too much time, and two, I couldn't stand having to play with Toilet Beard. Being around him just takes the fun out of it all. During the pandemic's height especially, I kinda needed to use every spare moment to make money through drawing, I only just got back to my real job two weeks ago. Well, God bless you for weathering it, OP. That must have been difficult. I was writing blogs and stuff through uh, the whole pandemic thing. Such is the magic of online work. And I was grateful for it, but then the YouTube took off and I quit. <laughs> Gotta look out for myself, you know? Take care of number one. Cake! I assume this is the birthday story. <laughs> so, do you know what it's like being a child of divorce? Yes. <laughs> Among the few perks, you can get more than one birthday. Well, sign me up. <laughs> this is something I try to enjoy the most due to the uh, roughness of my family. My mom and grandparents usually work together to have a family gathering for birthdays. We usually eat over there and take anything that's left home with us. And dad, well, <laughs> it depends. Usually. Yes, yeah, fathers are want to do. <laughs> Last year, my father, stepmom, and little brother came to town to treat me and Jess to dinner for my birthday. The next week, they came around with a cake that my stepmom had made for me. We ate together and had a pretty good time. And while I really enjoyed all the cake, so far I was kind of full up. So I put the remaining treat in this glass cake holder thing that Ben set up in the kitchen for any treats that were up for grabs. And then, my sister also surprised me with a Ben and Jerry's cake. Oh, God bless it! I'm hungry. I should never read these things when I'm hungry, but it seems like I'm always hungry. I swear I'm not a fat body. I'm doing gym time these days. <laughs> never having had one of those delicious ice cream cakes before, I actually felt like sharing it with the housemates so that we could all enjoy it as a little family. Unfortunately, the schedules of everyone were just a little bit hard to align at a decent time to have cake. <laughs> so Jess's gift had to sit in the freezer for a couple of weeks. I actually found it on the counter one day after coming down to make myself lunch. Hey, whoever left my fucking cake out should have put it back right after. Sorry, gurgled the beard from his perch. <laughs> I forgot to do that when I was getting something out earlier. Fucking idiot. A day or so later. You know what? I thought to myself, fuck it. I want a piece of that goddamn cake. I'll just let the others take theirs as they want to afterwards. So I went downstairs and I opened the freezer. Oh, that's odd. Maybe the paper seal broke after it defrosted? <laughs> I don't think that's scientific. No. No! No, 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 no! What the fuck? A piece was missing. Not a large piece, but a piece that should not have been missing yet. Seems to me Toilet Beard wasn't getting nothing out of the freezer except for that cake. Now I don't know about you, dear reader, but all of my family, and also just about every other fucking person that I've asked since, 
agrees to this unspoken law. The birthday person always takes the first slice. Yeah, maybe on their birthday, but two weeks later? <laughs> nah, it's your house. You do you, man. I'm not even big on cake. It's birthday steak and potatoes for me, but you better believe I get the biggest slice of steak. <laughs> Also, this was a fairly expensive cake. Ice cream cake. Cherry Garcia or something. Oh, good. <laughs> I don't remember, but the very thought threatens to rekindle my rage and send me hurtling off the stairs to bounce on Toilet Beard's skull. So, right. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I sent out a very heated text to the in-house group chat demanding to know who did it. I mean, I knew, but I wanted him to say it. He immediately fessed up to his gluttony, and I called him everything but a white man. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> we could probably phrase that a little better. <laughs> it was lucky for him that I was home alone, or something definitely would have happened. Bro, you really big on this cake thing. Like, have you considered therapy? <laughs> I'm not even joking, like, this is a really small thing to explode over. Instead, after thoroughly reaming this gluttonous blob, I took my cake and cut a big piece for myself. It did not taste as good as it should have. You see, I had definitely offered cake to the family, but the obvious cake that was up for grabs any time that was in the dessert case, you know, the one on the counter, the very obvious cake in view of anyone, especially a fat, useless waste of space that will never know the touch of a woman. <laughs> uh, woo, he's coming in hot. <laughs> yeah, that cake. The principle of the cake itself had been ruined. He went for the one that he had to dig in the freezer for, and he said nothing. He didn't even ask. Even after the fact, he didn't ask. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be upset, OP. <laughs> but there's levels to this kind of thing. I believe common fucking sense dictates that you not touch a cake that doesn't belong to you. Especially if it is as uncut as a French porn star. <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> Fuck you, Toilet Beard. Apparently, the beast can feel shame. I think it was that night, but it could have been the next day. He climbed those stairs that were oh so painful to his poor, poor knees. And he brought me an apology and a gift. Again, I reminded him that I was not angry about the cake itself, but instead the principle that was violated and the fact that he did not ask me which cake he was allowed to take from. He damn well knew which one. <laughs> I believe he was shamed from that because afterwards he left me in peace and didn't try to bother me again. At least not for a while. Good times. Oh, and if you're wondering, his peace offering was a Funko Pop. <laughs> Android 16 because birds. <laughs> Oh, long-time subscribers of the channel will probably know my take on Funko Pops, so I ain't gonna spoil it here, lest the comment section be taken over with people who are like, Hey, I like Funko Pops! <laughs> I hope you threw it in the trash, OP. <laughs> Courtship. Here's something that you've been waiting for, I'm sure. Beardo the Magnificent did in fact have a girlfriend. I don't know how they met, or how involved they were, I do not fucking care in the slightest, and if he were ever to be touched, that would be by a miracle of some twisted gods. I mean, he is touched, but just in the head. <laughs> uh, I'm not giving her the dignity of a Spider-Man theme, so we'll call her Squeegee. Squeegee was up from one of the Great Lake states, way up north. I think they met online somehow, which I can't poke at. He was very jumpy about his screen showing any messages when he was around others. Fair, fair, right? That's normal? That's normal. And of course, having absolutely zero interest in either of them, I can't really tell you with certainty what she looks like, 
Dark hair, kinda chubby, painfully awkward with people. Lee was really the only one who tried to converse and make her feel welcome, but that was kind of it. <laughs> I remained in my den almost the entire time that she was here when that eventually happened. And these are the details that I got from Lee. Well, it seems like both of them had a large manipulative streak. She was definitely a gold digger. They met on Discord through a D&D channel, and he courted her by buying her modules and a membership on D&D Beyond. They started dating after that. Oh boy. <laughs> Afterwards, she used her relationship with him to get things, like claiming to really need money or want some expensive thing, in spite of knowing that Beardo had very little money already. She finally came over and had never even seen a picture of him before. Oh god. <laughs> Or at least that's what she claimed. He had seen her though, because she had been on video chat during a Discord call, and that is how he knew what she looked like. And of course, she was physically disgusted by him. <laughs> uh, oh man, was a membership on D&D Beyond cost. <laughs> Less than a cuddle session, apparently. <laughs> she wouldn't cuddle, or kiss, or even watch movies with him. What? Dude, this, this chick is cold. <laughs> she definitely wouldn't share a bed with him, especially after seeing the state of his room. She slept on Toilet Beard's couch, I believe, because she would not, she refused to share a bed with him. She kept as far away as possible <laughs> until she could just go home. Oh, God. Uh, then a week later, she split. And Toilet Beard, of course, was a pathetic fucking mess that would cry and mope and talk about killing himself constantly. Within that week, Lee and I heard some noise on the stairs. We exchanged a look. I returned to drawing and Lee went downstairs to see what was happening. Lee did not return for about 10 to 20 minutes, so I left my room to peer over the banister. Below was Lee, sitting on the stairs, with a sobbing blob in his usual loungewear. <laughs> I just don't understand. I cared about her so much. My poor bro tried to continue comforting the beard. But no, no one is ever going to love me. <laughs> she was the only one I ever managed to, to trick into liking me. <laughs> uh, I don't think you're supposed to trick people into liking you. That's not how it works. <laughs> oh, man. I wish I felt worse about it, but I don't. Yeah. As much as I would have loved to save Lee from being there, I had to save my own hide. I mean, I'm not really a people person, and I already had zero sympathy for that fat fuck. Lee eventually managed to get away and gave me the cliff notes on everything, and it was pretty much what you'd expect. Suiji didn't want to be with Toiletbeard anymore, and that sent Toiletbeard into a panicked frenzy. End of story? Tuh, you wish. <laughs> Unbeknownst to literally anyone else, he managed to plead and beg his way back into her heart with thinly veiled threats of unlife, and she just agreed. Ugh, such a scumbag move, but uh, we'd expect nothing less from the beads, wouldn't we? After they got back together and she started hitting him up for money and things again, also used her status as the server's owner's girlfriend in order to get perks, Toiletbeard would in turn make comments about wanting things from her, that she just never wanted to give. <laughs> God damn. And he would also repeatedly hound her to come back and visit him again. That obviously never happened. <laughs> Eventually, she and Lee had enough problems in D&D for Squeegee to just leave the group. Toiletbeard came and told Lee off for being an asshole to her. Soon, Toiletbeard also lost his job and Squeegee stopped showing up to D&D at all, and stopped joining in their calls as much. About a month ago though, Squeegee finally found the guts to tell Toiletbeard that she was sick of him and didn't want to be with him anymore, and we actually haven't heard from her since. And now, rinse and repeat, 
He mopes and talks about how much he wants to die. This time, though, we don't let him come crying to us. The beard was left to his lonesome feelings, and he actually stayed in his room for like a week straight. I hope somebody was checking on him. That boy needs therapy. I am definitely not equipped to handle any of this, but I will direct you to a really great therapist whose cost is like super cheap. And so we move on to commitment. Four days before the fallout of his love life, Toilet actually hit Ben up for a favor. Lee was downstairs at this time and got to observe the entire interaction. Can you give me some advice? I want to get an engagement ring for Squeegee, he began. I really want to, like, start moving things in, in that direction, you know, and be with her and stuff. Ben was happy to give his friend advice, suggesting to just go for whatever feels right. Yeah, but I don't have a lot of money to get the ring. <laughs> uh, it's not exactly about the ring. It's more about the meaning behind it. Ben clued in as to what the beard was after, and it was not happening. Especially with the fact that Ben had literally just spotted toilets, rent, and utilities for the last two months so far. I mean, it seems like an easy way to make him somebody else's problem, but... <laughs> It's not like she ever would have said yes anyways. <laughs> uh, do you not just love the audacity of this filthy man thing? <laughs> uh, he's a booch, that's for sure. I think this made the crushing finality of her dumping him again even more real for him. Oh, I'm gonna be alone forever. No one's ever going to like me. It's okay. He continues to sing his greatest hits to anyone unfortunate enough to listen. Next time, I'll let you know about the intervention. The beard intervention, if you will. <laughs> See you soon, and may your beards stay buttered. Oh, toilet, toilet, toilet. What are we going to do with you? <laughs> He's obviously a leech, a shameless mooch, a slob, but there is such a large part of me that also wants to help him find redemption. Although that's probably just because I'm not living with him at the moment. <laughs> if I had to look at his face every day, I can understand how those feelings would uh, quickly wane. Saint Ben has indeed earned his nickname <laughs> in this saga as with all the others. I truly do hope that he'll get it figured out at one point or another, but it doesn't seem to be progressing very well. <laughs> Because anybody that tries to help him, he really does just, like, suck the life out of them. You know what I mean? And if he's going around moping about uh, committing unlife, then Ben helps him once, and guess what? The score is now even, and Ben can kick Toilet Beard out 100%, right? I'm pretty sure that's how we've established it works. A life for a life or something like that. I guess it's the last story that kind of got me down more than anything else. The the two stories before, that's, that's beautiful. <laughs> But it's just him being refused by this woman who basically was only with him for the money, however a small amount of money that was. <laughs> She's really gonna come over here for a D&D &D Beyond membership. <laughs> Couple of D&D &D modules and she's like DTF, at least until she sees him. <laughs> she's like, whoa, I can't go back home quite yet because the ticket's not for another week. But I'm just gonna stand here awkwardly until I can leave. <laughs> Uh, oh god and then of course after that trash fire he goes crawling back to her oh you gotta feel at least a little bad for toilet beard <laughs> as much of a mess as he is oh but as bad as i feel i'm also loving the story and i cannot wait for the story to devolve even further we've got one more part of toilet beard part number five that will be coming within a few days and i hope that you'll be looking forward to it as well friends if you did enjoy this video, I hope that you'll like, comment, and or subscribe, as always. Maybe share the video around if you should like. We also got a bunch of links down in the description. You know, plugs and social medias and all that other stuff. 
Oh, and my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous patrons, of course. I'd like to thank them all, as always, but especially Calvicus, Fatboy Shrimp, Robert Waits, TSM Kirby, Teddy the Police, Aaron W., Delicious Jelly Donut, Candy Sora, Fire Drake, Levison, Silent Revolver, Zathras, Zero MMX, Little Lone Wolf, Vanilla Mel, Rouse Tower, Caustic Fox, Derpy Tricks, Aaron Lennox, Fisher Diggy, High Patch Japan, OG James Cook, JM Coon, Jerry, John Hero, KK, Miss Monday, Magdalene Marshall Thornrose, Melgar the Destroyer, Mirthful Baker, Mr. J, my boy Nat One Nick, Lady Nicks, Katekins Elizabeth, Sidestep, Cider Drinker, Serrated Ass, Siegfried, Steampunk Ellie, Synaptic Boomstick, Brilliant Tamago, Tato Ferret, That Duck and Bug, Fusky, Treeberg, Redwind, Goose Says Honk, Leon Embers, Naga Viper, John Indoors, A Roxers, Cake Jerry, that's a different Jerry, Crafty Kitty Cat, Mark 211, Maybe Next Time, Organic Cam, Princess Rosalie, Ghosty, The Last Shinobi, and the Maestro himself, Zuka Serfantes. We've also got a new friend joining us today, a normal Joe. <laughs> He sounds like a normal guy. I mean, welcome to the fold, you know? We might thrive on cringe around here, but normal is a nice break from that. <laughs> so welcome to it indeed. I do hope anybody out there not currently subscribed on Patreon will consider it, but if you can't do it financially right now, don't sweat it too hard, friends. I just appreciate you coming on through, spending some time with me, and I hope that you come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow. In order to do so, you'll need to keep yourself safe out there, wash your hands, but also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Maybe watching some more Red X videos. Yes. <laughs> Always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I shall see you in the next one, and until then, bye-bye.